my name is Kelly Wilson and my report was on sexism in the workplace. So just a little background information for the introduction is the purpose was to uncover the extent to which sexism occurs in the corporate workplace. As a female about to enter into the work world, I just kind of wanted to know what to expect and who are the targets for sexism, who are the main targets as women, and why does it occur, and what are things that we can do to end sexism in the workplace. And some assumptions for this report were that not all men are responsible for sexist behavior in the workplace, but that all men, or that most men, play a contributing role. And the assumption was that if a man sees sexist behavior in the workplace and doesn't actively stop it, then he is a contributing factor in a problem with sexism. And the limitations for this report were a lack of resources and time. Um, there were only a couple months to do this, and the resources were articles on the internet, so all secondary sources, but if there was more time, the report would obviously be more in-depth. So for historical problems, women started joining the workforce in large numbers during the 1970s, and this was the first time that females really started competing against men for jobs, and this was the first time that like sexism became such a large problem in the workplace, and people noticed that there was definite inequality between men and female, females. So the traditional stereotype of women staying at home to be caretakers is still a barrier that women are trying to break through today. For sexism in the workplace, not a lot has changed since the 1970s, which is very sad and weird because oh, women have made progress in so many different fields. Um, but for some reason in the workplace, there's still such like, a large gap between men and women. And then in the workplace, approximately 30% of women have felt discriminated against. And in the corporate workplace, even more than that, 45% of women have felt discriminated against. So this is obviously a really big problem that we need to end. So women in education, currently more women than men are expected to earn bachelor degrees. And here's just a chart with women being in light blue and men being the dark blue that has all the different ages of um, men and women who earn degrees. And statistics show that in 2015, 30.2% of women have earned bachelor degrees, while only 29.9% of men have. And as you can see, the light blue is dominating the men. So women have the same level of education as men, or in some cases, more education, but this isn't being shown in the workplace for some reason, which is not fair, especially because they have the same um, background as them. This is a quote from Cheryl Sandberg and I just found it to be really interesting and she says a truly equal world would be one where women ran half our countries and men ran half our homes which is just a statement that we're still so far from equality um, in the present day still. So I found some current problems and one big problem was objectification of women. So men in the workplace have a tendency to talk about women in a derogatory and disrespectful manner. This usually occurs when women are not around, but it can also occur when they are around. But the worst forms of demeaning conversation happen when women are not in the workplace. And this just forms like an us versus them divide. And it just always keeps women on the outs in their own jobs, which isn't fair when men are just the center of everything. Um, the masculine stereotype in the workplace leads men to a false fantasy where they are better than females and can treat them in any manner that they choose. Um, this just goes with, um, for an example, men will call women girls and say like the girl that I work with or the girl who works at the front desk, this just automatically belittles the woman and is in a good way to refer to them. And then condescending and belittling conversations can affect women's work ethic, self-esteem, and home life which I'll get into a little later in the presentation. Wage gap is another huge current issue where recent studies have shown that women make approximately 80% of what men make in the same jobs. And as, being sh as showed before, this has nothing to do with education levels, so there's no reason for this. Women are generally associated as caretakers, which comes with a negative connotation in the workplace. And women have various duties outside of work, which leads executives to believe that women are, as are not as dedicated to their jobs as men. And they just think that men are more stable and that 
that's why they're more likely to get the promotion or to get the job in the first place because um, they just think that if women have something that comes up in their personal life, they'll just leave right away, which isn't like an assumption that should be allowed. And so that are the main, those are the main problems with wage gap. And the next one is maternity leave discrimination. Approximately 54,000 women are forced out of their job after having a child. So there are laws against this in the United States, but executives can get around these laws by um, making, there's just several loopholes they can do. Um, for example, they can say that a woman, that their position's changing, so that they can apply for the, next, the new position, but both parties know that that female is not gonna get the position. And also they can say that their performance has been lacking and just fire them right away. In the United States, jobs are required to allow for a 12-week paternal leave, but most jobs do not fully compensate during these 12 weeks. And this is just another factor that contributes to maternity leave discrimination and makes it really hard on the woman after having a child. Um, another huge issue is insecurities and lack of identity. Women are not given the same level of respect as men, therefore they must work harder at the same jobs to prove their competence. And men notice insecurities in certain types of women and act on these insecurities. So for example, women are given the same level of respect as men. They have to like balance their home life and their work life and they have to turn on different qualities and are expected to be a different person at home than they are at work which just leads them to like not really know who they are. And when women are, um, show insecurities, for example, in a, in a meeting, if they are apologizing or feel like they can't speak um, over, a man, over a male, then the men notice that and then they just attack that right away. And they see the insecurities and um, just make it worse for females. So after those four main issues, the recommendations that I've come up with are um, awareness for both men and females. If both men and women are aware of inequalities in the workplace, and then they'll know when sexist behavior occurs and they will try and combat it if um, it comes up. Also, women should enter the workplace confident and assertive. The main issue is that they feel like they don't belong sometimes but they should know that they earn their spots, they have the correct education, and um, they deserve to be there. Women should befriend each other. It's not like only one woman is, woman is facing this. All women are facing this all over the um, different workplaces, so women should work together to combat inequality and actively fight to end inequality in the workplace, so that way, um, in 30 years from now, we it's not that we still have not made any progress. And the conclusions from the report are just as said, stated above. Um, women are not given the same level of respect as men, therefore they must work harder at the same jobs to prove their competence. And men notice insecurities in certain types of women and act on these insecurities. And that is it. Are there any questions? No questions? And I'm so excited. And that's it.